Hey there, welcome back to another video this time around. It is my review of the 1972 martial arts film, The Way of the Dragon. Now, before I go any further and share any more thoughts on this movie, I want to give a special shout out to Yule for requesting this review. And if there's another film, TV show, or topic that you would like to see me discuss in the future, feel free to donate to my PayPal. The link will be in the video description down below. And I'll try to get to it as soon as I possibly can. Now, The Way of the Dragon, which is also known as Return of the Dragon in the United States, is a Bruce Lee film. Uh, he was not only the star of this movie, but he also directed this film. This is actually the sole directing credit that Lee had uh, when it comes to his career. And this is also a film that is rather well known in uh, action uh, fan circles, uh, specifically because of the fact that uh, this is the movie where Bruce Lee fights Chuck Norris in a coliseum. And that really is as epic as it sounds. It definitely is a very epic moment in martial arts history. Now, I felt for a first-time director, I thought Lee did a pretty decent job. I thought he did a good job directing this movie. There's some nice shots of uh, Bruce Lee directing himself, hiding in the shadows uh, in an alley. There are other sequences that are well shot in terms of the spectacle or the fight choreography. Um, you could definitely tell that Lee had a lot of experience at this time when it comes to shooting and, and working with fight choreography. And so the fight scenes are definitely uh, a real standout when it comes to the direction. There are some other stuff where you can kind of tell it's a first time director behind the camera. Some of the establishing shots, some of the sequences that don't involve an action scene kind of do look a little bit uh, clunky. But for the most part, yeah, I thought it was pretty good. It would have been nice to have seen uh, what Bruce Lee would have been capable of as a director in the future. I think he would have gotten better as a director with the more opportunities that he was provided with if uh, he didn't pass away so young. Now... The film is also written by Bruce Lee. So Bruce Lee, he starred in this, and he also wrote the movie, and he directed it. Ah, that's quite the triple threat. It really is. It's quite uh, the triple feat, so to speak. Um, and Bruce Lee is, I would say, definitely a better martial artist than he is technically a writer. I would say at this point he's also a better director than a writer. Like like the script is fine, but I I just didn't find it consistently engaging most of the time. Like I didn't really care about the romance subplot between uh Bruce Lee's character Tang and Chen. I didn't really care about the whole drama with Ho and Uncle Wang. And the fact that the restaurant is being threatened and and Tang comes in to try to stop it from being taken over or bought out and bulldozed. I didn't really care about all that. And it definitely is one of those things where a lot of the plot is just build up for Bruce Lee fighting, which it makes sense. That's what that's that's what you are looking for. When it comes to a Bruce Lee movie, you were looking for the fights. You were looking for those kind of things. You're not looking at a Bruce Lee movie for the drama or the romance. But there were a lot of moments, though, like in the first half of the movie, where you didn't really have a lot of fun fights. So you just had a lot of this filler material. So I think he could have had a better balance writing wise when it comes to. Uh, fighting versus some of the other character stuff. Also, I don't really feel that the humor in this is as effective as I, I believe Bruce felt it was. Like the whole opening sequence with Bruce Lee and 
his character Tang messing with this girl with an ice cream cone. The whole scene where he's at a restaurant and he's in France and he's trying to get the waiter to get him some eggs and the guy brings a whole bunch of soup and you know there's this repeated gag where his character just needs to use the restroom like he needs to take a piss uh because i guess he just has a a, a very small uh bladder for some reason i have no idea why lee thought that was so funny so there's that, and then there's like the twist at the end where the uncle character was actually working with the bad guys the entire time, which I thought was just dumb. But when it comes to the action, when it comes to the the spectacle of the movie, it definitely does deliver on that front. The film also features a cast uh, that com that's comprised of, you know, Bruce Lee is the lead as Tang, and Bruce Lee is good for what he gives himself to work with. It seems like he realizes that his strengths are really with his physicality and with the fluidity of his martial arts and with the power of his fighting and his presence in uh, a action sequence. He realizes that he's not the best uh, performer when it comes to having a lot of dialogue or having a lot of moments that don't involve him flashing his uh, uh, martial arts skills. And that really is what makes him the biggest standout in the entire cast because he gets the best moments. And it makes sense. It's it's a Bruce Lee movie. Like He wrote it, he directed it, and he's, he's the star. Uh, Nora Miano as Chen, and just kind of serviceable, you know, there, so-so kind of acting. Same thing goes for Wai Ping O oh as Ho, uh, or Huang Chung as, as Uncle Wang, or Tony Liu as Tony, or Unicorn Chan as Jimmy. Uh, Chuck Norris, though, was, uh, was fun as Colt, this American martial arts guy who gets hired to try to stop Tang. Uh, Robert Wall is also in this cast, plays uh, three different characters. Robert Wall was in uh, Enter the Dragon. He played one of the characters in that movie. Now, definitely the, the best performers, the best performances really come from those three. It come from the big three that were, I think that got a top billing, if I remember correctly, or... Uh, some of the the biggest billing at the time, you know, Bruce Lee, Chuck Norris, and Robert Wall. Uh, the other performers, like I said, they're just kind of there for me. But when it comes to the scenes involving those three, I, I definitely did uh, enjoy those sequences, and and I, I was entertained by the film. Um, I think there's this other guy who plays the boss. His name is John Ben. I think that's who it is. Some generic Italian mob boss uh, type. This is the other thing about the movie is, yeah, when Chuck Norris shows up and when Robert Wall is there, it definitely feels like there's a viable threat or opponent for Bruce Lee and his prowess with his martial arts skills. But when it comes to the other characters that are in the film, and the other performers who are part of the, the villains or the group of villains, it's not nearly as effective or as efficient. It's one of those things where it's kind of just like almost too cartoonish in some ways. It's one of those things where they come across more comedic than they do intimidating. So I think that that, that wasn't necessarily the best approach. Definitely didn't put uh, the, the performers in the best uh, position to succeed either. The film features some cinematography by Tadashi Nishimoto, which is just, which is uh, pretty pretty good uh, for a film like this. Some nice shots of Rome and Italy and so on and so forth. Um, some really great looking shots in the Colosseum. The editing by Peter Chung, I, I thought worked well. I thought it worked. Uh, 
uh, with uh, Bruce Lee's uh, fast movements and thought he had a good uh, connection with Bruce when it comes to how Bruce wanted the film to play out and how he wanted uh, scenes to to uh, be cut together. It has a score by Joseph Koo, but it, it's not really a score that is really that memorable or that strong. There are some moments where it kind of does initially catch your uh, ear, but that's because it just sounds so different and, and strange for this kind of movie. It doesn't really feel like it's in the right kind of film at times. So I like the opening credits, for instance, and a few other uh, moments of, of, of the score. Now, I can't really think of much else about the movie. I mean, it's like 100 minutes. So there are some moments where it kind of drags its feet a little too much. Like there's some stuff in, uh, like in the middle of the movie that I didn't really find to be that entertaining compared to the rest. But at the end of the day, it's a enjoyable enough martial arts movie. Like it, it's... It's not on par with Enter the Dragon or some of the other classic martial arts movies from this time, but it's still an enjoyable action movie. There are a lot worse ways to spend your time. Uh, when Bruce Lee is on the screen, it's fun. It really is. Like when he's flexing or when he's training or when he's kicking ass, uh, there's just a way that he does it, The a way that Bruce Lee showcased his martial arts skills that was really cool and is still cool to this day and it's very fun to watch and the f final fight between uh, bruce lee and chuck norris is definitely one of the, the better uh fights from this era and that alone makes this uh, worth a watch just to see bruce lee in his prime Go up against Chuck Norris. Like, that is some amazing, incredible stuff. But, uh, yeah. I I would say, definitely, I, out of all the Bruce Lee films I've seen, this is probably like the second best that I can think of off the top of my head. Um, but then again, I've only seen like two or three. Um... But yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad uh, I checked it out. Uh, it, I de definitely had fun with it. It was a entertaining enough uh, martial arts flick. But anyway, uh, thanks for watching uh, my review of Way of the Dragon. And until next time, I'll see you later. See ya.